their workhorse. Uh, Ferdia is a third country sharing a border with Brighton. What was it I read about them last night? Don't we have a truce with them or something? It has been around for a while. Yeah, but it's hardly there. Ferdy has never been too afraid to stir up a war or two over some real estate. Or some, uh, or over some insult of their forefathers. Whatever excuse. Our truce with them is just a piece of paper. If they wanted to, they'd take us down in a heartbeat. Or they would've, at least, until we got an army to secure the border. I never know, though. Never know, though. Wow, this guy talks a lot. It's wonderful. I hardly had to say a word. Or at least, I would if it didn't seem he uh, if he didn't seem to want me to respond. Now, I put on a bit of an angry expression for a second, but then reconsider. Maybe a sad expression would be better. What's my character anyway? Am I being myself here? Wait, wait, no, none of that matters. Just answer. That's terrible. Okay, I need another question. Maybe I should let some of my ignorance show. Why is it like this anyway? You don't know? Well, hell, I'm not surprised. They practically skip o over that in schools. Give it a paragraph, maybe. Sure, they'll tell you that Brighton used to be a Gabrian company, or a colony. That we gained our independence 112 years ago. They just never mentioned the cost of that freedom. Econo economic sanctions, crazy ones. I mean, they weren't always crazy. Back then, minimum wage could feed you in more. The sanctions haven't changed though, haven't adjusted with the dollar's value and the cost of living. We screwed up, got lulled into a false sense of liberty, got so caught up in things that we could do. And the things we could do, we forgot what we can. Thanks to inflation, these sanctions are making us so poor that they're killing us. I mean, literally killing us. Not a great thing to bring up when there's something to celebrate, but I don't even think they're tracking just how many have died trying to live. I know I've definitely lost count. Then is this the root? I mean, it sure does suck that these people are poor, really. Though, honestly, if they've been this way for so long, they should be used to it. What is poor exactly? The televisions were harping on, harping on it earlier, and David was harping on it just now, so I figure it must be important, but, you know, it's nonsense to even consider this seriously. I don't understand any of this. The obsession over the economy, the excitement over higher wages, none of it makes sense. Poor is just not having enough for a, sh a snack. Money is a trivial thing. Another thing is that, uh, is that this is not even a major society of the world. That being the case, how come we're dealing with it at all? And Cyrus, Cyrus, what's he thinking dragging me here? He probably only wanted to drink. What can I learn about the whole world from just one person? Not much. Ah, this is stupid. Stupid. Ah, it must be something else. If it's so terrible here, I wonder how it is in Gabriel. Complete luxury. They live like they live like kings. Even their burns live better. Their bums live better than us. Wow, that's pretty rough. Whoa, this is filthy. A filthy thing to say. It's a damn miracle any of them work at all, with how much they get for free. They get fired, the state takes care of it, their heart, the state covers it. No job to start with? The state. The state will go to the goddamn moons for its precious Gabrians. Can you believe it? People are starving here, and it's that kind of fucking bullshit that I wince and raise my shoulders a little. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I don't really take any offense to swear words or rude language. But my dad was never terribly fond of them, and I've grown, grown unused to their bite. The harsher ones, anyway. It's a bit of a shocking to hear one in that tone. I decide to look back at the television, feeling embarrassed on D David's behalf for reasons beyond my immediate comprehension. The air, uh, it, it airs the same sport for all four seconds before cutting out. Oh, but... When the picture returns, a twisty and ink... Uh, intricate crest. A duck flying over a sword with a p and pickaxe, it looks like. Wait, that's their... Okay, that's a bit of an odd symbol. Or a crest. Uh, appears on the screen. Set against a noble blue. Could this be a team logo? 
An address to the audience from the coach and captain? Oh, I want to see. I lean back a few feet from the counter until I am supporting myself only slightly with my fingers and mostly with the stool's two hind legs. Hmm. Honestly, the warmth of the beer has not completely dissipated. David, what's that? Holy. George, turn it up. The person who is wiping glasses behind the counter raises his eyebrows slightly and then reaches listlessly for the remote. When it is in his hands, he turns and gives the television a tired glance. The crest on the screen wakes his eyes uh, immediately, and he is soon mashing the volume up. I hear David shifting at my right, and it sounds as though he's turning in the direction of Cyrus and the other man. Clark, get over here. Oh, so that, man, that man's name is Clark. Clark and Cyrus look at David strangely, and then stra uh, strangely look at one another, and then they begin rushing over. I find their antics confusing and unwarranted. What is the big deal over this? In a few moments, the whole gaggle of men surrounds the television. Even the waiters stop cleaning tables to watch. I know that sports are popular and all, but this is a little bit much, isn't it? This is an emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Please pay co close attention to the following message. Oh. The message will begin in 40 seconds. This is an emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Please pay close attention to the following message. The message will begin in 30 seconds. Goodness, this is it, isn't it? It, the thing, the problem. Oh no. No, I'm not ready for this. Cleaning gar garbage is one thing, but this is a completely another uh, this is completely another thing. And I don't even know what it, what exactly. I search Cyrus's eye, uh, eyes for something to comfort my spirits, but I find nothing and do not know why. I I bothered at all. His face is indiscernible as ever, aside from the serious brown lip. Of course. Message will begin in ten seconds. Crap. The message will now message will now play. The crest vanishes, revealing a man in a suit in a, at a desk, a dapper brown suit, and a large brown desk. I imagine he must be important, as the crest from before is quite brazenly carved into the wood of his furniture. As for the man himself, he looks older than Cyrus, which is ancient at worst and age sixty at least. He looks very tired. His face is worn, and his expression does nothing for the mood. He does have some fake looking hair though. That's pretty funny. I almost have a small chuckle, but given the severe expressions of my company, I decided it would be best to stifle it. Brighton. Brighton, we have endured. As a people, as a country, as a workforce, we have endured these past 120 years. Surely, surely, surely you are all very, very tired. I, my people, my friends, am very, very tired. The word sobering meant little to me before this, but I completely understand it at this moment. The way this man carries himself, his speech, and his dour, uh, dour voice have all combined to chill the warmth in my head, from my head. I set my stool b back down and to have an actual, and have an actual seat, looking up at the monitor with certain intensity. The man has me engaged. I'm tired of the media, betraying the common man, the fool, an ignorant sort, all too glad to do the deeds of his betters. Tired of the foreign co of these foreign companies providing us work wages that we will celebrate for only pennies more. Tired of hearing my people say in passing in normalcy, no, I do not know if we will eat today, perhaps tomorrow. Brighton, I am tired of our masters. I'm so tired, so, so tired. People of Brighton. We have grown so used to freedom that we've forgotten that we are not free. This chair and this desk, this stage in the, uh, of an office on which I play, my part, is evidence that of that. I offer a serious and composed look, back, uh, look to Cyrus. If I'm understanding correctly, and I can't say I'm one for understanding much of anything on this world, it seems that this leader here is not much of a leader as he might like. Which, frankly, I, do, I don't quite get. The way leadership works back home, at least on the larger scale, is that several especially intelligent and reasonable people rule over all of us. The idea of power being not enough, or being vain, is, seems complicated to me. Like, what's the point? Why the show? I'd like to ask Cyrus about it, but he isn't returning my gaze, and instead remains focused on the television. 
I suppose I'll just have to keep listening. But I'm not here to tell you the troubles of our state. I'm not here to tell you the glory of our fathers. I'm here to confirm the quiet whispers through the alleys and the worried murmurs of the Gabrian elite. Pardon? Consider this a threat. People of Gabria, you have four hours to comply with my demands, or a nuclear weapon will be launched at your country. Oh, shit. That can't be good. Winter, come over here a minute. I rise and step over to my mentor, feeling surprisingly clear-headed and befuddled all at once. He takes me from the counter, leaving three ge the three gentlemen to discuss whatever it is exactly that that man on the television had just brought up. A nuclear weapon? The hell is that? What does Barnaby think he's doing? Can't believe he really did it. What kind of place does he think this is? Sir, could you please break down what just happened? I'm kind of lost here. Winter. Huh? I know we've only just arrived, but did you look at the fl uh, at the files you were given at all? I did. Have you been paying attention to anything out there? I have. You have? You have? Then explain who that man is. Explain anything. Ah, uh, don't put me on the spot like that. The leader of Brighton, sir, President Barnaby. He, he's angry about Gabriel. Uh, I'm not an idiot. Gracious. Why can't I articulate or explain it any better? I, I just wanted to clarify some things be because I'm shadowing you. Sorry, I reacted out of impulse. I forget how unprepared life in our world can leave us for these things. I, uh, his tone shook me up quite a bit. I'm shivering a little. I was going to lie and say I understand, but I'm having a lot of trouble speaking right now. I want to go home. Winter, you may not, you may have not realized the severity of the situation. This is, this isn't going to be community service like your first assignment. I know that. Hey, eyes straight, Harrison. Allow me to be frank. Brace yourself, because there may be a lot of dying happening soon. Dying, but... but... I'm shocked, honestly. I figured those rumors I heard from Clark were only that. Hold... hold it, hold it. Death? I just thought... As far as we know, this world hadn't even developed nuclear weapons yet. What did I think? He said weapon. Am I daft? Though, with their strides of utilizing nuclear fusion for electricity, I suppose it was only a matter of time. People are going to die? I don't... It's people dying. Just slow down for a second. I suppose that's what comes with their job. Not everyone can be in the dozers, years, right? We smooth out the creases and bring chaos to order. Slow down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Though suddenly war... Uh, sudden wars really are rare. War? My mind starts to tumble, and my heart tries to explode from my chest. I definitely can't handle this. Uh, war isn't something I'm supposed to take care of. Shut up. Don't excite the locals. I cover my mouth and raise my shoulders. Of course they're looking for war. You can't be uh, believe people dying is a <laughs> commonality. Do you even think properly? I'm finding it incredibly hard to do anything properly right now. Shaking, I turn to... Uh, I turn to see the people at the counter. They thankfully are engrossed in the president's speech. I look back at Cyrus and speak softly through my fingers. Shouldn't we? Shouldn't I go home? Yeah. Oh. This was supposed to be something like diploma diplomacy. Goes to show you how important it is to get a look at the situation yourself. Anyway, if what I heard was right, we don't have time to get you out of here without causing a scene. As you should know, interplanner shifts take a longer to prepare than just moving from place to place. But I'll protect you no matter what happens, Winter. And you know how to escape if you really must. Yes. I don't know what I, I don't I don't know if I want to do that anymore though. If he's just talking about maybe dying. Of course, we don't have a lot of time in general. His demands, I couldn't care less about them. I I couldn't care less about but this deadline Four hours. Consider this a powerful lesson and come with me. We proceed to exit the bar without saying goodbye. It seems it is time to get to work. It's too bad that I'm terrified. We take to the streets at a quick pace, service leading to wherever. I find it difficult to keep up with him though. 
In more ways than one, my head is swimming from the mention of war. What level is the war, do you think? What level? You mean, what level do you think it'll be? It hasn't happened. With any luck, it won't. Luck? Uh... I'm thinking this could be something like a four on the scale. Four. Four? Uh, oh gracious. Four is one away from five, and two away from six, which is terrible. Six is very, very terrible. The worst. Even four, though. A war without rules. Uh, that must be particularly gross. It is a very disturbing prospect. So disturbing that I grab my hair and almost shut my eyes. What exactly is this? What will happen? Test. What do you think? Is it really time for tests? Be appreciative that I'm, e uh, I'm even doing this work, Winter. He seems much more angry than before. How irksome. What do I think? What, what, what it could be? Uh, well, uh, first of all, Gabriel will respond to Brighton's threat. Possibly. Possibly. Why wouldn't they? I'll answer that for you, because it might work in their favor to ignore it. I, uh, I don't get it? Just think, Winter. Uh, okay, just think. Wonderful advice, you. Uh, well, maybe they just don't care about Br at all about Brighton, and they'll use this tantrum as an excuse to destroy them. That's nonsensical, I know. Keep pointing out how I'm like a fish attempting to walk. That's right, Winter. You're right about why they wouldn't respond. What? How absurd. Isn't Gabriel a leech on Brighton's back? They need Brighton, so why would they want to destroy it? Well, they wouldn't actually destroy Brighton. What they would do is invade and take away what little freedom and independence this country still clings to. Then they would be able to take advantage of the citizens in, an, uh, in ways unprecedented. What a disgusting thought, I can hardly imagine it. Alright, now here's another question. Why do you think Brighton... Uh, why does Brighton think it can take on Gabriel? Damn it, Cyrus. How, how should I know? In the same way you knew the first answer. I was bullshitting. Language. S sorry, sir. Thinking about recent events might help. Goodness, is he trying to th uh, get me to... <laughs> is he trying to get me to think in the place of murderers? Those are the boots I would not like to fill. I guess I have to... No. He mentioned, uh, he mentioned recent events. I can't think that the minimum wage increase would embolden this country enough to believe they could stand against the obviously, obviously superior nation. Especially with how un unimpressed the president seemed about it. Even David wasn't terribly excited. Oh, David. What was it that David mentioned? Their new army. The person I spoke with, his name was David. He said that Brighton had gotten the military recently to defend against the border country, Ferdia. He said it was because Ferdia is dangerous and ignores treaties, but isn't that far more likely that this army was actually created to engage with Gabria? With an actual mil military, and what seems like a new kind of weapon, at least judging from how the locals reacted, then that would uh, explain their confidence. I think. See, Winter, you are cut off for this. Huh. Wait, don't reference things I mumbled to m myself before we came here, creep. Then you don't understand the situa- Then you understand the situation. Yes, but I'm curious. Isn't this more like a level 5 war? As Brighton and Gabriel are technically separate, I can't call what might happen a civil war. Then this is a technicality. Just a technicality. I'd figured Brighton and Gabriel were still very close. Well, look at you, you're all calm. I frowned with indig indignation. Oh. Stumbling over my words again, as usual. I'm not calm uh, at all calm. If this is essentially a level 5 war. Well, you look at. You look at. I do not let up my frown. Uh, with my frown. Well, that isn't all there is. How this might proceed largely has to do with what level I would give this potential war. Sarah stops, and I stop in turn. We are now in front of the fountain. 
It took me the entire time to, uh, till now to realize that the streets were deserted. The doorways are even clear of ragged chil uh, those ragged children who would ask us for pennies. Could it be that everyone is listening to the dress? Before I can drift off in this thought, Cyrus looks down at me. A nuclear weapon is one that can kill a lot of people and destroy a lot of things almost instantly. Uh... Excuse me? Honestly, Winter, what did you think it meant? I meant earlier when I said a lot of dying could be expected. I won't go into the details, but it's not something you would have been taught about yet. I've dealt with it before, though. You're lucky. I'm not lucky at all. Not even the uh, the l in, in the little slightest. What kind of thing is that? Is it magic? It is, this isn't a magical world, Winter. Think the higher ups that you won't be going to those just yet. They're less fun than they sound. Oh god, magical worlds. I should not be going to worlds with wars either. Huh, point. You can check your codex for information about what we'll be dealing with if you like. I need to contact support and update them anyway. So at least you'll be uh so at the least it will give you something to do while you wait. What is it uh, called exactly? Just nuclear weapons sound seems rather broad. Like spear weapons or fruit drink. I believe that it's a fusion bomb. While Barnaby didn't specify, the rumor the rumor I heard supports it. Also, it makes sense considering the reactors. Reactors? You forgot? We saw them when they, uh, we first arrived. This country utilizes fusion reactors for power. Ah, right. The looming and shadowy giants that stand in distant steps. I remember not wanting to remember them. They were disconcer disconcerting. Like many other things here, they looked like a mess. And unlike many other things here, they, vi uh, they vibrated. I thought they were going to violently break apart. Anyway, a fusion bomb should be under weapons, obviously. It's technically not a pure fusion, but most worlds can only do so much. Not pure. Yeah, well, it's a t limited reaction jump started by a f uh, fission. True fusion bombs are like a man-made are li rather are rather like man-made stars. Stars are beautiful. Not the word I'd use for those. Yeah. Just keep the distinction in mind. And read the fusion bomb entry. Right, right, understood. I mumble this as Cyrus turns from me and begins to uh, raising his wrist to his mouth. And suddenly, uh, he suddenly pauses though and addresses me again. Oh, and Winter, while you were at it, check out the appropriate entries pertaining to this world. Always find your codex. It could save lives. Remember to keep tabs on it. Understood, sir. I looked down on my own wrist. Both of us 